Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, in continuation with our main topic, algebraic fractions, what we are going to discuss today is multiplication of two algebraic fractions. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, we'll be able to perform multiplication of two algebraic fractions. This is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing this very lesson today. As usual, in your favorite segment of the lesson, my dear student, today I'll give you another interesting number. This number is 88. 88 is so unique, so special. In fact, I'll tell you what is special about this very number, 88 after completing my lesson today, so don't go away. My dear student, to begin the lesson, let us first learn the rule. It is this rule that will guide us what to do in order to do the multiplication of two algebraic fractions successively. So rule number one says factorize all the numerators and all your denominators completely. When you do that, step number two says to divide the numerator and the denominator by the common factors. That is, after factoring, if there are common factors between your numerator and your denominators, so you do that division. Step number three says multiply the remaining factors. That is what remains after your division. What remains at the numerator level, you now multiply them together. And finally, you now multiply what remains as the remaining factors at the denominator level. These are the four steps that you have to take in order to do the multiplication of two algebraic fractions successively. So let's move and take examples. Example number one, you ask to simplify that that is your ask to perform this multiplication of two algebraic fractions. The very first one says 4x minus 2 all over 15 minus 3x. This fraction is to be multiplied by this fraction 5 minus x over 2x minus 1. Solution to this very problem. Copy in the given fractions, ask to multiply. So what we now do, first step number one, it says you now check out uh, all those that are factorizable. You have to factorize them. And those that are not factorizable, you just copy them like that. This is step number one. So look at this fraction. My numerator, the very first fraction, my numerator is factorizable. So I have to do this factorization. Similarly, denominator is another uh, expression that I can factorize because something can divide 15 and 3x. But looking at the second fraction, is not factorizable. The numerator is not factorizable. No common factor between the two terms. And the denominator is another thing that is not factorizable because there won't be any common factor between these two terms. So let me just uh, let me just copy copy that second fraction and the very first fraction, which I said is factorizable. Let me do that. Starting with the numerator. The numerator, which is 4x minus to look at it. Uh, I can divide each of these two, two terms by two, so I have two outside of the bracket. Uh, and looking at my denominator, 15 and minus 3x is factorizable because these two terms can each be divided by this number 3. So I have 3 outside of the bracket. Uh, so if I go back to the numerator, dividing 4x by 2 gives me 2x, and dividing minus 2 by 2 gives me minus 1. So what to now be in the bracket here would be 2x minus 1. That is 4x divided by 2 will now be 2x, and minus 2 divided by this 2 will give answer minus 1. Going back to the, the, this denominator, 15 divided by 3 gives you 5, uh, minus 3x divided by 3 gives you minus x, so I'm going to have 5 minus x. So step number 1 is complete. So step number 2 is now says check for common factors between numerator and uh, denominator. If there are any, you now divide. I can see 5 minus x at the numerator level here, and this is another 5 minus x. Similarly, this is 2x minus 1 numerator. I have another 2x minus 1 at the denominator, so they can cancel out. So what I'm going to do, look at it, starting with 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1, cancel it. Look at it, it's a common factor. And uh, I have 5 minus x, 5 minus x, another common factor, which I, in the end I'll cancel. So step number two says, uh, number three, I beg your pardon, is now says uh, you now multiply the remaining at the num numerator level. So after counseling here, I have one. I have one, so I'm going to have two times one times one, which gives me two. 
and the denominator I have three times one times one here, which gives me three. So in the end, I'm going to have two over three. And this is now the result after multiplying these two algebraic fractions. Let me move and take another example. Example number two it says simplify these two fractions. That is, perform this multiplication of the two fractions. One of them is t minus three all over t squared plus nine. This fraction is to be multiplied by t plus 3 over t squared minus 9. Solution to this very problem, copying the given task. So step number one says you now check all those that you can factorize, you factorize them out. So looking at the very first fraction, it is numerator, it is not factorizable. Denominator also. It's not factorizable because this is t squared plus 9. If it were t squared minus 9 like this one, I can apply difference of 2 squares. So what is factorizable is now only denominator of your second fraction, So which means I'll copy all others. But the denominator of this very second fraction is what I will need to factorize. And factorizing this, applying difference of 2 squares because this 9 can change to 3 raised to the power of 2. So you now have t, t squared minus 3 squared. So inside of this defactorization would now be would now be t minus 3 multiplied by t plus 3. So I continue. So what I will now do is to move to step number two. Step number two says you now check out whether there are terms that are common. You have common factors between your numerator and the denominator. I have t minus 3 here. I have another t minus 3. So these are common. I have t plus 3 here, I have another t plus 3 here, so I can now cancel them out. So let me do that. So what I say, t minus 3 divided by t minus 3, this will give me 1, which we don't usually write. And this t minus 3 divided by t minus 3 to give me 1, which we don't also write. So I have 1, 1 here. Just looking at this t plus 3, and this t plus 3 also, I can cancel them out to get 1, 1 there. So if I now check my numerator, I'm now going to have 1 times 1 here, which gives me 1. And my denominator, I'm going to have t squared plus 9 times 1 times 1, which will still be t squared plus 9. So this is what we now have as my final result. 1 over t squared plus 9. So let's just move and take another example. Example number 3 says, given that p is the same thing as this fraction, 3 over 2x minus 6. And R is the same thing as this fraction, x minus 3 all over 2x. The question asked here is to calculate what is P multiplied by R. P is already this fraction, while R is this very fraction. Solution to this very problem, that is doing the tax to P multiplied by R, I will now substitute the expression for P which is now this fraction 3 over 2x minus 6, multiplied by r, which is this expression x minus 3 all over 2x. So substituting for p and r, if done correctly, you now have 3 over 2x minus 6 multiplied by x minus 3 all over 2x. So this tax now reduces to multiplying these two fractions. So rule number one says you now check all those that are factorizable, you factorize them. Look at the very first fraction. It is the denominator that is factorizable. These two terms can be divided by two. While the second fraction, numerator is not factorizable. Similarly, denominator is not factorizable. So let me just factorize this uh, denominator of the very first fraction. So factorization of this gives me two. That is, factorization of 2x minus 6 gives me 2 outside the bracket and inside will now be x minus 3. That is, dividing 2x by 2 gives you x, dividing minus 6 by 2 gives you minus 3. Let me copy that the second fraction, so times uh, x uh, minus 3 all over 2x. So I will now check any common term C between the numerator and the denominator. I can see x minus 3 and x minus 3 common. So let them cancel out. 
That is the only common that I can see here between the numerator and uh, the denominator. So what remains uh, at the numerator level, I will now multiply. So this three times the one which I have after cancelling gives me three, while the denominator two times two x c gives me four x. So I'm going to have three over four x. Let me take one more example. Example number four is says simplify this two fractions. That is multiply this very first fraction by the second. The first fraction says x square plus two x y plus y square all over x square minus y square. Well, the second fraction is says x square minus x y all over x minus two y. So let's just copy the two fractions. That is copying the given tax. Rule number one says factorize all those that are factorizable. So looking at my first fraction, the numerator is factorizable. Denominator of it also is factorizable. Now looking at the second fraction, it is numerator is factorizable. It is only this denominator that is not factorizable. So let me just copy it. With the second fraction, it is denominator copied because it is not factorizable. But all others, I have to factorize them. So starting with the numerator of the very first fraction. Factorization of this, if you don't correctly remember in your SS1, we're now going to have x plus y into x plus y. That is x plus y times another x plus y. Expanding of these two brackets gives you this back. Going down to the denominator, x square minus y square. Using difference of two squares, you now have x minus y times x plus y. Then I'll now move to my second fraction. Numerator here can be divided each of these two terms by x. So x outside, you now have x minus y in the bracket. That is uh, x times x gives you this x square. x times minus y will give you minus xy. So I finish factoring. So what remains is to check out whether there are common factors between numerator and denominator. So looking at this critically, I can see x plus y at the numerator, I have another x plus y at the denominator. I have x minus y here as numerator. I have another x minus y here at the denominator so they can cancel out. Let me do that. So starting with x plus y, x plus y, look at it, they are is common. And uh, let's see x minus y, x minus y also common, look at it. So after canceling what remains at the denominator, if I multiply, I have x plus y times this x. And what remains at the denominator is x minus 2y. So doing the multiplication, you now have uh, x times x plus y. At the denominator, you have uh, x minus 2y. So this is where you can stop because you cannot further cancel out here. So this will now be the final result of this uh, simplification. With this, I have come to the end of this very lesson, my dear student. I hope with the few examples given, You'll be able to you'll be able to perform multiplications of two algebraic fractions. Let me just move to the last segment. Mercy is fun, and I explain what is interested about the number eighty-eight. So eighty-eight is the only number known whose square has no isolated digit. This number eighty-eight, if you are to find it is square, in that square. You and you will not have a digit that is just one single digit. Let me just find 88 square. 88 square means 88 multiplied by 88, and this is what you are going to have as your result: 7,744. So in this result, you can see it contains four digits, and those four digits uh, you have two different digits: seven and four, and each of those digits just appear twice. There is no digit that appear only once. But all other numbers, I tell you, if we are to find their squares, in the square you must have one or two digits that is just a lot. That is, there is no any other exactly the same digit in the result. This is, it is only 88 that if we are to find it is square, it will not have any isolated digit. This is really interesting. I believe you never noticed this. We see more of this amazing things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.